Last week, I put a call out on a renewable energy group on LinkedIn asking for a guest host, and Dr. Novenka Alesovic answered the call. Dr. Alesovic is a research professor at the Institute for Multiplanary Research at the University of Belgrade. Her specialty is green hydrogen, and she is well-respected in the green hydrogen industry, having authored over 100 research papers and presented at international conferences. I'm thrilled to talk green hydrogen with her, so join me. Hello, Dr. Novenka. Thank you for meeting me today. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me, Eric and all. That's great. So you are joining us from Serbia. Yes. Which is amazing. And you're with the University of Belgrade. Yes. And so tell us about uh, what your background is and, and what got you interested in the study of green hydrogen. Uh, I have uh, started studying uh, green hydrogen exactly almost 30 years ago when I was a PhD student. Uh, my supervisor was working uh, on water electrolysis and uh, uh, actually producing a green hydrogen, you know. Green hydrogen actually is producing by water electrolysis process. It is uh, splitting uh, the water by DC current uh, on the other electrodes, you have oxygen, and other is hydrogen cathode. You gain hydrogen, pure hydrogen, so-called green hydrogen, because there is it is absolutely green uh, as for environmental uh, 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 influence. It is uh, pure and did not contain any uh, traces, even uh, greenhouse addresses or something like that. Uh, I have started uh, when I started my PhD uh, 30 years ago uh, to, to be interested in water electrolysis and the production of green hydrogen. For those who don't know, uh, green hydrogen thus is produced by water electrolysis, splitting the, the simple splitting water by DC current, uh, and you gain pure green hydrogen. Wonderful. And that is. Um, and that's what got you curious about the study of green hydrogen and and how you got involved in it. Yes, I I, I have uh, in, been involved uh, uh, as a PhD student, and uh, actually after that we continue to study fuel cells as a device. It's uh, using uh, a fuel uh, as a fuel green hydrogen, and uh, that was all all my career. I can say all thirty years almost my career at the University of Belgrade, uh, Institute for Multidisciplinary Research, uh, Center of Excellence for Green Technologies. We are devoted to green technologies. So uh, we are very aware that uh, our uh, planet uh, is uh, going to be uh, in danger if we continue using only fossil fuels and to destroy yeah. environment and uh, climate changes, anything that uh, is caused by using fossil fuels. Exactly. So from your perspective, where you live, I'm in Canada. A lot of our listeners are all over the world. You live in Serbia. So from where you live, um, how do we, you know, how can globally we transition from fossil fuels to renewables in the world? Um, I could say uh, we have to, uh, 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 see it globally because uh, Serbia is a small country. It is just six million of people. You don't know. It is uh, a, a small demand and small supply energy. You know, uh, but we all, all have to think and and uh, do things globally because uh, unfortunately in the same in Europe the, the consumption and production of energy is the uh, highest. Uh, you know. Uh, it is only based on fossil fuels, uh, even 75% of uh, consumption and production and energy today is uh, similar in the uh, USA and Europe, for instance. 
uh, is based on fossil fuels, you know, gas, oil, and coal. And it is, it was, but it is not uh, yet now. It was cheap, it, it, it was not, um, but today, you know, uh, in scientists uh, are aware that fossil fuels uh, are going to be exhausted. Uh, it is not only uh, influence from environment, but they are going to be exhausted. The demand and supply, you know, the demand is increasing, the supply, the fame and the reserves are, will be exhausted. Uh, it already caused uh, climate changes, you know, and natural disasters, greenhouse effects, uh, and many other uh, biodiversity disorders, some, uh, and other uh, harmful consequences for our environment. Because of that, uh, we all, scientists, stakeholders, policy makers, uh, marketing experts, experts uh, like mm -hmm. you, uh, uh, to raise the consciousness so uh, to aware uh, awareness of uh, audience how is it important you know to uh, tra transit from fossil fuels to green one uh, uh, green are uh, based on wind solar green hydrogen with my batteries it is done now but it is still only uh, even including nuclear energy it is still even uh, uh, as I can say, only 25% uh, of full consumption energy in the world. It is too low, you know, and we are all working here. Uh, we have to work together to increase yes. renewable energy in, in the future. So what state-of-the-art advancements, you know, in technology uh, have, to have been made uh, toward getting off fossil fuels? Um, uh, advancements uh, of uh, exactly green hydrogen is because it is absolutely no harmful for the environment. It is a fuel, a fuel uh, that uh, uh, when you use it as uh, a fuel in fuel cells, uh, in a, a, a proton exchange member of fuel cells as a devices instead of an internal combustion machine uh, uh, that you use, you know, gas or iron, uh, we use uh, in one manner uh, uh, hydrogen fuel cells, we use hydrogen pure fuel that uh, there is no classical combustion, but after oxidation of the fuel, you gain only uh, uh, as a waste, as a, a, a gas is uh, nothing uh, besides water, steam, and the excess of heat. You start from water and you gain water, steam, nothing else. Uh, it is absolutely safe for the environment, and uh, it is uh, also important to uh, and the sign that water cycle is one of the shortest in na nature. You know, water cycle is <laughs> happen. Uh, we start from water. Canada has water, a lot of water. <laughs> I have Serbia and not our planet has because it is a water cycle. You know. I love the terminology, uh, circular economy. I, I like that. That I, I like that. How does what does the role? Or what is the role of green hydrogen? What does it play in that? Uh, uh, how green hydrogen uh, contributes to uh, uh, green hydrogen contributes to circular economy uh, in a, a, a following way? Uh, if you can imagine, we are starting for water. You know, you reach a water in a different way, and uh, after splitting water, we get in hydrogen fuel. Uh, it is used as a fuel in fuel cells, and then it is produced electricity and power for transportation, for tablets, stationary devices. And especially in transport devices, and other cars, trucks, uh, and something like that, we gain, if I, uh, like I already said, we gain only water steam, no gases should harmful for the uh, uh, environment, just uh, a circular is that knows in this sense, we start from water and we get water in another uh, uh, form, and that's a cycle. Uh, nothing to lose and nothing right. to uh, uh, harm environment. Exactly. How can it contribute to uh, sustainable economic development? Yes, and also uh, the land sustainable economy development, development, namely um, already mentioned fossil fuel usage, uh, 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 if I can say, uh, are absolutely 
like against the sustainable development, how, how can it be sustainable if we know that it we will be exhausted? And we all the time, uh, uh, it is increasing process. We are uh, destroying our environment. We are destroying uh, uh, our climate and and, and our, we are uh, leaving our planet in uh, really, really bad conditions uh, to our future generations. So if we start like that, but uh, it's for sustainable development and being hydrogen, uh, it is absolutely sustainable because you will, uh, from the, also the same reason, we have water and we can, uh, all hydrogen produced from water splitting, we have uh, at the end water steam uh, from uh, transportation devices and from the factories, and uh, it is absolutely sustainable. It is only one very sustainable uh, fuel. There are others, you know, but it is one of the way to make the world sustainable because uh, water would not be exhausted because we say exactly. it's water cycle and our planet is mainly water in the world. <laughs> right, and lots of water. Sorry to interrupt here. But did you know that this podcast is a passion project of Sociable Media? And this is where I get to do a shameless plug for our services. Sociable Media is a digital marketing agency that works with clients in the renewable energy sector. We design websites, manage social media, run ad campaigns, write content, all that sort of digital marketing stuff. I just want to throw that in there. Now back to the podcast. Um, what are the future challenges uh, do you see? Are there any for, for the future of green hydrogen? Yes, uh, yeah. uh, well, of course, uh, the challenges are, uh, I, 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 I can see, uh, I, I have following me that uh, many years ago, and uh, I think uh, last uh, maybe two years, it is uh, increased. Uh, uh, policy makers at the first time are important. Uh, I mean, U.S. Department of Energy, uh, European Council, governments of uh, uh, rich countries, G7, and G20, you know, who are decision makers, you know, uh, to, uh, to uh, assign funds for uh, development of new uh, green uh, renewable energies. Uh, and the other challenge for green hydrogen is infrastructure to to the uh, build infrastructure for green hydrogen to be used. Uh, and also um, uh, economic uh, impact analysis uh, to persuade customers that it is not so expensive like it was. You know, the, the market changed uh, the fossil fuels and uh, uh, maybe one uh, thousand five price is raising, you know. And right. also uh, you, you probably know this, uh, uh, expression, critical raw materials, they are materials that are abundant in the earth core, but now are not available because in Europe, the war stopped it, you know. Because of that, uh, uh, European Council uh, adopted critical raw materials, uh, materials that are uh, abundant, but not available. They are, for instance, in Siberia or something like that, you know. Right, right. And, um, and uh, yeah, I would like you also to emphasize all uh, uh, your uh, uh, role as a marketing expert. Uh, you know how to persuade customers, how to, you know, we all um, uh, hardly change our habits, our, uh, how to persuade them that it is better for them to use it, to change, uh, to have it to drive a car uh, on gasoline and then use Green hydrogen power one. It is oh, produced. Really. Yeah, the marketers, um, you know, we have a good way of helping with awareness and education, which is the whole intent of this this podcast is to create awareness and education from reliable resources and sources. So a recent uh, listener just sent in this comment, and it was uh, somebody who I interviewed recently about hydrogen. And uh, they made the comment that green hydrogen is going to be made in Canada and then it's going to be shipped to Europe. But that green hydrogen, um, it's, it's not shippable. 
uh, some say that hydrogen needs to be generated where it is used. I, I just want to get your thoughts on that, whether or that, um, what do you think about that comment? I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, hydrogen uh, is not uh, uh, necessary to be shipped, but it could be shifted. It is uh, uh, necessary. Uh, if I um, uh, see Canada and Serbia or something like that, uh, it is the better for the bigger, uh, for the bigger consumption continent to produce hydrogen at the spot and use it, uh, uh, for instance, at airports at big factories and something like that. But uh, if it is case from Canada to Europe to shipment, uh, then there's no need to ship because in Canada you also have water and you can produce hydrogen and use it uh, in Canada. But if it is also uh, unneeded uh, even to ship, uh, hydrogen can easily be turned into uh, ammonia or methanol uh, in chemical reactions with nitrogen from uh, atmosphere and you can ship uh, ammonia for instance as a hydrogen carrier but it is not uh, necessary you know uh, in europe uh, even uh, uh, it was started with pipelines you know pipelines so for gas plus fuel gas fossil fuels of course they cannot be used for hydrogen but uh, now in Europe, they are, they are started to uh, construct uh, well, big projects where they uh, started to uh, construct pipelines of, of, of different materials that, that could uh, also transport transport hydrogen, uh, gas, gas hydrogen. What are the, so I have two more questions left, and one of them is, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of between green hydrogen and lithium ion batteries? I think yeah, that both of them are, they have some advantages of, in my opinion, uh, I think uh, that lithium ion uh, exactly uh, will stay uh, for many years in portable, uh, uh, you know, uh, in portable uh, devices, and uh, like mobile phones or laptops or something like that. And, and the such devices, uh, number of such devices is increasing uh, all, all, all the time, you know. And, uh, but for transportation, uh, uh, I mean cars, trucks, uh, factories, I think that Greek hydrogen is better solution. Uh, yeah. uh, why? Uh, lithium ion batteries uh, seems to be uh, cheaper, but it is not, not exactly for uh, uh, transportation. It is cheaper for mobile phone. You need a small battery, it's okay. But to uh, go to power uh, for a car or for truck, you need uh, one, uh, uh, one thousand, several thousand uh, uh, um, grams, so several uh, kilograms of lithium, and it is not uh, then so expensive, uh, so cheap like it is uh, usually. Uh, in audience uh, thought. So you're saying it's best applied for trains or airplanes, large? Y yes, uh, uh, I think for uh, the, even for planes, uh, they, they're planning uh, to use hydrogen, but lithium ion uh, will probably stay, um, I, I believe, uh, many years for thermal uh, devices because natrium, uh, sodium, sodium uh, ion is also developed, but not enough to be not commercialized. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, another, another interesting thing uh, I learned uh, uh, recently, lithium uh, is abundant. It is uh, said that it is abundant. There was a lot of lithium in uh, air core. However, uh, half of lithium uh, could be, be uh, must be uh, re remain for uh, mental diseases, organic causes like schizophrenia, the bipolar uh, disorder. You know, the medicines are based on lithium, and it, it is absolutely needed for such purpose. You know, because of that, we cannot use all lithium to power car and to uh, leave people without medicines. The last question I want to ask, and it's and it's really important. And what type of work are are you and your group working on right now at the? Because you're at the Institute 
for multidisciplinary research at the University of Belgrade. So tell me a little bit what you're working on. We are uh, all the time uh, trying to uh, synthesize catalysts uh, uh, for hydrogen production on the other side. Uh, on the other uh, uh, hand, uh, for uh, fuel cell reactions, you know, uh, uh, catalysts uh, to synthesize catalysts uh, with the high activity and stability, uh, use, to use it for pr production of hydrogen, and also parallel uh, catalysts for fuel green hydrogen fuel cells as devices where fuel hydrogen is oxidized. And we are currently developing uh, these catalysts and catalyst support, and we have uh, established a very fruitful collaboration with uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory from California, for Argonne National Laboratory from uh, USA also, from Calgary in, uh, in uh, Canada, uh, and many Europe uh, uh, famous investors because we need a uh, very Host, uh, and uh, very expensive ex equipment uh, to uh, do such kind of research, you know, to synthesize these catalysts, to test it, and to try to improve to for future uh, using of green hydrogen as a renewable energy. Well, I really appreciate your time here today and sharing your thoughts. I'm um, I'm excited to see what's next for for you and your colleagues, and um, you know, thanks again. I I don't know if anybody has any questions that they would like to ask. If anybody who is listening or watching this, uh, please send in your questions to podcast at sociablemedia.co, and um, we'd we'd love to hear from you and and. Dr. Novenka, I mean, it'd be great if you could help me answer any of those questions that come in. Of course, yes. I will answer any question that you got or, or, and just contact me by LinkedIn, by email, whatever. That's great. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Uh, thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye. I always love hearing different perspectives from different parts of the world about how to get off fossil fuels and use different ways of reimagining energy, and in this case, green hydrogen. I want to thank again, Dr. Novenka for joining me. And if you would like to be a future guest on Reimagine Energy, please reach out. We'd love to have a discussion. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day.